Welcome to the Mystic and the Skeptic. Today we're doing a special uh, broadcast. We're not only doing the typical uh, podcasting, but we're also doing video. It's not live, but it will be on YouTube uh, pretty soon. And what we're doing, as Mr. Uh, Sin Cara over here is getting himself situated, uh, we're having my two uh, great friends who are either Mexican or Mexican American. So then Ooh. we can have a whole history of what in Spanish they call Iberoamerica is, is the Americas that are influenced by uh, the Iberian Peninsula, or in English it would be Latin America, because for some reason I like to call it Latinos, when Latino means that your language comes from the Latin or from influenced by that, uh, that tongue. But <laughs> what I want to talk about is that we're not only doing a review of John Leguizamo's um, uh, Latin American history for morons, we're expanding that to address how all of Latin American history involves also American history or the history of the United States since Latin Americans have been here from the beginning of the conquest. So it's easy to say, oh, Latin American history down there, but there's Latin American history here because um, a third of the U.S. was used to be part of the new Spain that is now Mexico. And there has been influence of uh, not only the native population, but according to uh, Yama culture right here, our, one of our guests, there's, there was even people that came before. Uh, so I would like for Jose Figueroa, who's uh, checking out his phone right now, and, and uh, Yama culture to describe themselves a little bit, and then we can start the discussion. Uh, Jose, uh, go ahead and don't forget to brag about Rice University while you're at it. Okay. I have nothing to brag about. Uh, so, uh, uh, Jose, yeah. So let me let me think about a little bit about this. So, really, I'm I'm here because I'm I've always been interested in in um, in history, and I do have a degree in history from Rice University uh, in Houston, um, and. Uh, uh, one of my most fascinating uh, uh, courses I took at Rice was one on U.S. Latin American relations. And as a young man in you know the '80s, um, uh, you don't get you don't get you get Texas history, and Texas history says that Mexicans were bad, 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 right? And uh, bad hombres. The what? Bad hombres. Bad hombres, malos, bad hombres, malos hombres. And uh, yeah, Trump, exactly. He got his history from, I guess, uh, seventh grade Texas history. He even so, <laughs> that's Donald Trump's history. So, uh, so we get this history, seventh grade uh, Texas history. And I don't know if they have, do they have Missouri history and California history? I'm assuming they do. And so we get this and it's so, it's so, uh, well, uh, uh, whitewashed i guess right i mean that's the that's the term right it's whitewashed to to present that um that these were good you know white people you know and some some latinos and mexicans you know that uh were in some way were um um uh being uh uh what's uh, what's the word we're looking for they were I'm sorry, I just got home. Rebelling against the... Uh... Rebelling. No, no, no. So, so what they're looking at. So we have a, we have a, uh, just like we have right now, this authoritarian uh, uh, leader or uh, uh, president, uh, General Santa Ana, and uh, uh, made it just difficult for, for all these people to survive uh, under, his, uh, un, uh, under his rule that uh, they had to, they had no choice. They had no choice. But, but you go to any university now, any university in Texas, right? And you take, which you don't have to, but if you take any really good history course about U.S. history, and if they cover that portion of American history well at all, and, and I'm, I'm telling you they, they do because at least they did it right. And I'm sure it's at Texas. If you go to a, uh, a junior college, I have friends that teach. There's actually, and I forget his name right now, there's a, there's a gentleman that's on, uh, uh, he's interviewed a lot on NPR locally. Uh, he's a professor at, at Lee College in Baytown, and he's written some books on this subject matter. And uh, I apologize to him, and, and I'll, I'll have to get his name soon. That's maybe I was looking at my phone for a couple of things I needed. But um, 
but we get to so angry with this whitewash history. So you go out thinking like, okay, I'm Mexican. I'm, I'm part of the problem, right? So I'm part, so I'm gonna, I'm, a, I'm gonna like, this is my space. I'm gonna stay right here, Mexican American, right? I'm gonna stay right here because my ancestors did something bad to white people and they had, to, they had to fight them off. And this country or Texas, well, first the Republic of Texas and the US, we have a right to all this because they were so bad to us. Just like, uh, you know, the, uh, the British were to, uh, and actually you get that history too. It wasn't that bad either, okay? It's, again, it's a land grab at the end of the day. So we take these, you realize that one, it's really about slavery. It goes back to the same thing. The, white, the reason we had the Civil War 30 years later, you know, in America, the, the Texas, the, the, you know, the Austins, the, the Travises, the Houstons, whatever they were, it wasn't Houston at that point, but um, um, all these people were, uh, they, it, it, it was about slavery. They, uh, Mexico was going to, uh, had initially allowed them to bring their slaves. Um, and so it's always about property. At the end of the day, it's about land and property. And it's about, um, if you, if you can, if you can get enough people convinced that, that you're on, that God is on your side, that history is on your side, that you're being, that you're being oppressed. That's the word I can find earlier because I hadn't had any need. <laughs> you're being oppressed that, um, uh, that's okay to, you know, by the way, Think about the time that we're talking about now. There were there were rebellions going on across the world, right? It wasn't it hadn't been that long since the American Revolution, right? It hadn't been that long since our Constitution, the same, you know, uh, uh, you know the the, uh, the Constitution we're under under now. And so, uh, so you have a situation where it's it's 50, 60 years, right? Everything's very recent, right? And 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 it looked like America was going to be a slaveholding country still, the U.S. These people that came to, to Texas, uh, that, that got, you know, allegedly, you know, got, got free land, or well, they did get free land from, uh, he said, oh yeah, we're gonna become Catholics. We're gonna become Mexican citizens. And, um, but, uh, and, and all these things, and we're gonna learn Spanish. And, so, yeah. and yes, we're gonna eventually get rid of our slaves, right? Yeah. But, um, but they, they weren't honest. They weren't sincere about that. They weren't going to do any of those. I mean, they did those things. They became Mexican citizens. They they learned Spanish. They took Mexican women and all that. But Are you talking about specifically, you talking about people. I'm, I'm talk, oh, I'm talking about the the settlers that came on the land grants, the Spanish land grants in the beginning in the uh, 1820s. Thank you for for having me uh, clarify that. So we're talking about uh, um, the Austin uh, Moses Austin. Um, and uh, and his and his and his son Stephen F. Austin. So so th those were given to them. They got what three hundred families. You know, so I don't have my notes, but about three hundred families came to Texas um, with Spanish land grants. So this is right before Mexico, uh, you know, uh, becomes a, you know uh, uh, gets independence from Spain. So these are Spanish land grants, and they're all over here. I mean, we're on Spanish land grants here, and and so. Um, so they show up here and the, part of the deal that they got from the, Spain said, look, you need to become Catholic. You need to, to, you need to learn Spanish. Sound familiar? Uh, you, need to, you need to, you need to, uh, and eventually need to get, we'll let you bring the slaves for right now. Although by that time, Spain had outlawed slavery. Now, was there still slavery and an injured servitude going on in, in Spanish colonies and Mexico at that time or, were the the natives the uh the ind indigenous people here being uh murdered and slaughtered and and raped and pillaged for their resources of course they were but but slavery had had been out been outlawed or was about to be been outlawed in Spain. it had been outlawed in Spain and so but the, the plan is they're letting them have their slaves but um that's not going to last very long you know that lasted about what about 20 years that he that he, and and they you they, they found every kind of excuse to um and if you look at some of the original documents uh, even actually at the very end there um travis uh, travis i'm sorry austin and those guys sound reasonable right they seem like they want to work something out you know uh did santana come in here with a lot of uh, heavy artillery of course he did of course he did but all right can can could we have had a uh, a reasonable peaceful solution to this thing Yes, we could have. And, you know, think about Texas. Right now, 
we, we think about Texas right now, how huge Texas is, right? It was even bigger then, you know what I mean? In terms of, remember, Texas was up into New Mexico and so on and so forth. Um, and, uh, of course, there was California. By the way, California had nothing to do with this. But what happens is as soon as Texas gets, gets moving on this, what does California do? They also um, uh, start an insurrection in California, right? So they want to get in the action, right? They see. So it was this part of the world was so, except for, again, the natives, the Native, Native Americans, it was so sparsely populated, basically, Mexico wasn't going to be able to defend it, you know? And the same thing, the British weren't able to defend it. So they saw an advantage. They took advantage of that. Um, and, and then they held out because at the end of the day, they always wanted to be Americans. They, they came here, manifest destiny. This, they were going to take this. So it's all premeditated. Okay, so all those founders of Texas that we, we, we turned into heroes, there's the Alamo. And there's the San Jacinto Monument. And, and, and um, I was there for the first time a couple of years ago, down Goliath, okay? Uh, you know, all, it's, uh, I, get, I get a little misty. I get a little misty. <laughs> Just think about it. all these poor, you know, uh, you know. And, and there, there is, I mean, the whole, the whole thing, there's this thing about war. It's romanticized, right? Especially historically, right? And so now everybody, they have to be heroes, right? Because they died for us, right? They died for us. So everything's romanticized. The history books uh, uh, whitewashed all this. But at the end of the day, it was premeditated. They knew the Austins and every white person. By the way, oh, this is the great book. The, the, again, the, the, uh, uh, the author from Lee College. I'm going to get that guy um, in Baytown. He says, um, he says that... By the way, there were tons of undocumented, illegal whites coming from America after that. Just because 300 of them came, were authorized to be here, there was, there was like no border patrol or anything, right? So they all just, there were thousands just showed up and just started grabbing land because there was nobody to stop them. So forget about the land grants. So think about that part. And, and so I, I read, I, I read uh, we should get this gentleman, by the way. Professor, and I'll get his name for you. I promise <laughs> after, this, after this, we need to get him on. And um, so, think about this. They always talk about the land grants because they want to say that they came here legally, right? But they didn't ever say about all the thousands that came with them and after them. This is this is before the revolution. They came here illegally or undocumented because I don't like the word illegal. No, here means illegal. Yeah, for them. But they came undocumented too, and they just grabbed land. We, we probably have friends and neighbors whose ancestors, they, they live quite nicely here in Texas or Houston for that matter, no. whose great-great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, at least five, six, seven grand, grandparents, uh, just walk across from uh, Louisiana or Arkansas or whatever and, and, and just, you know, sat down on a piece of land and took it. And okay. now they're very well off. I'm so gonna. Anyway, I'm gonna stop you I'm right gonna, there. Cut me off. I know. Cut me off. The, the reason so, I'm cut, cutting you off I'm is very it, passionate about this stuff. It does from here. The reason I'm cutting you off is because I was listening to the Tom Hartman program, and a gentleman yeah. of, of European descent calls up and he's like, "I don't know why you keep blaming all of us for slavery. It was only a very few people who had all the slaves, and we were peasants too." And and that's something that I, that that is true, but it's not true because you can be a peasant of the dominant race, but you're still benefiting more than the oppressed people. But we're gonna go deeper into this because the same goes for people of Spanish descent. I grew up in Mexico where um, there is a sense that the Spaniards are the bad guys. So then suddenly there's like a counter racism. Well, just because you are Spanish descendant, suddenly you are a pillager. And that's something that we saw in the John Leguizamo special. I have to uh, describe it more for our audiences. Uh, as soon as I describe it, we're going to go to Yama Culture to tell us uh, his perspective. But so, so Netflix has a special. It's actually a Broadway uh, presentation by uh, the Colombian actor John Leguizamo. And he's talking about how 
even us growing up in America, we haven't had the the history of, of Latinos. We it's been oppressed, kind of like you were saying, and that there's only this understanding that we're not even in the books. Like there is no, uh, you know, it's it's sparse all around, but there there's not this. Uh, are you like are you talking because we can't hear you? No, 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 no. I'm just listening. I was just mimicking it. We get, <laughs> like a we get sprinkles, sprinkles of brown. But but there's you no can't. major contributions, and, and that's and that's the biggest argument for the American version of what happened. But we have to go to the Mexican version of what happened, the Peruvian version of what happened, and the Spanish version of what happened, based on all the different guests. But so he he has he makes good points and he brings up things, but he also. Uh, it, it's really easy to be biased and to demonize the people that, that, that you don't like or the people who have been oppressing you. So it's very easy to just say all the Spaniards were rapists and all the British were killers. And, and it's like, it's more nuanced. History has always been nuanced and history has always been written by the winners. So now that there's this, um, what, what they would call, it's a controversial term to call it revisionist. Revision. Is it really revisionist or is it really truth seeking history? And, and more expanded history as compared to the history of a particular group of people who feel that, that they were the heroes or that they were wrong or whatever. But let's have, uh, growing up in Mexico, I grew up in Mexico up until age 15. Um, yeah, yeah, my culture, can you tell us about uh, what you heard in Mexico of Latin American uh, history and what you heard in college here and at what age did you make the, your transition? Okay, uh, so first of all, um, thank you for the invitation, um, and hello to everybody. Uh, well, um, about the history uh, of Latin America, uh, I, uh, I went to, uh, to college in Mexico and did a lot of the uh, middle school and high school in the U.S., so I kind of have what your perspective is from of, of uh, Latin American history, which was, again, just sprinkles of of, uh, of Aztec and sprinkles of Mayans, and then perhaps if anything, some sprinkles of uh, U.S. Mexico uh, uh, war, and then from there on, you you jump over to Cuba, and then from Cuba, um, I mean the missile crisis. See that much? What I remember? Okay. So you know, being, in, being in Mexico, uh, again, it was college. We really didn't see that much history. Even, even if, with my major international business relations, we didn't see that much Latin American history. But we did see a lot of, I guess, uh, you know, Latin American markets. But the, um, the history of, of uh, Latin America, we really didn't see it. I, I'll be honest. In, 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 in the different countries, you'll see what they want you to see about Latin America, okay? So in Mexico, they'll be like, yeah, Latin America's over there, and yeah, Simón Bolívar, and yeah, the Incas before that, and, um, and the Gran Colombia, if, if anything. But uh, the Panama Canal, uh, perhaps the uh, Pinochet, and all the, uh, the, everything that happened during um, the, the 60s and the... 70s and the 80s, the uh, Operation Condor, all that kind of stuff that we know in, in Mexico, and you know, and the 68, you know, uh, um, oh, 1968, of course, uh, uh, the uh, 2nd of uh, October for Mexico, and all that kind of stuff, you know. So, what I'm trying to say, and I don't want to vary too much or, 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 or just go to different places, is that in different places, what I've seen is it's more centralized to, to what the country really wants to talk about, okay? If we were in, in South America, I'm pretty sure we are, or if we had a South American, uh, they, would, they would be very knowledgeable about what was going on, like, like I said, in the Gran Colombia and Simon Bolivar and, and, and Peru becoming its own country and all this kind of stuff. Uh, more than 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 they would know about uh, when I say North America, I, I would be talking about Mexico, 
as 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 part of the North American country, uh, country that actually speaks Spanish and it's Catholic and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So answering your question, um, Gonzalez, is that what I've seen is just sprinkles of of everything else in different places, and and it's it's and it's me as a professional. I uh, I also uh, teach literature. I talk, I teach culture. Uh, I would like to consider myself a Spanish expert, and that means you know pre-Hispanic and post-Hispanic. And again, it's 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 what you can really fit in. Um, every Friday, every Friday is a cultural Friday in my in my class, and we basically uh, we'll go to just like you mentioned, we'll go to uh, Peru, or we'll go to Spain, or we'll go to Mexico, and we'll talk. Um, I'll talk about the history of these places, what I've known, uh, what I've been taught by the people of the area, because I've visited uh, these countries, and then answer the questions that, that the kids have, or like I always tell, tell them, um, tell me what your history teacher told you, and then you come to me to hear the truth. That's, that's usually what I tell them. Um, but that's why I know. I'm, I'm sorry, continue. That's a, a very bold statement. You know, you're telling them the truth. So, uh, but it, but it's because you have been exposed to more and you have researched it. Because here in the Mystic and the Skeptic, our our hope is not to create an alternate history, but to create a more, like I said, more expanded, more. Um, you know, the book that uh, Lewisamo and many progressives uh, recommend is this one, a uh, People's History of the United States, because. Uh, now we're talking about not the history that is the official uh, mandated history of the government. But we're talking about people, uh, uh, a history that is uh, the anecdotes and the, the oral histories and the experiences of the people who went through that. And growing up in Mexico, my challenge was that uh, you almost don't hear much about uh, the natives. They talk, like you said, they talk about the Aztecs and the Mayans and then they disappear. And, and it's not like, here in some places, they might bring a Native American expert to, to give a presentation of their tribe or something like that. They don't do that at all. And maybe it's because I grew up in, um, in two, I grew up in a major city, uh, Monterey. But even when we lived in Cancun, there was uh, very, it, has, it wasn't fully developed when I was there as a kid. Uh, and there was a huge a Mayan population. They had no say or no place to share their experiences. And there was this sense of like the Mayans are gone and the people that are here are not Mayans. They're, they're like, whatever. Uh, they're just workers. Uh, they weren't even given um, equal status. So it's funny when, when uh, Jose was talking about slavery being outlawed, the reason that slavery was outlawed in Spain and in all its kingdom is because it wasn't necessary anymore. People were indoctrinated and servile. So you don't have to, uh, put shackles in them now they are doing it willingly to a certain point because they have been uh, subjugated and now they have been put in line it's, it's a mental subjugation and that's some that's a case that one thing that I, that I want to discuss in full length is the caste system established by the Spanish and the Portuguese in Latin America but going back to what you were saying uh, Yama there was this thing about even the way that the 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 continent is divided is different the way that is divided here in the u.s as it is in latin america so this idea that there's a north america and central america and south america to us in in growing up in mexico there there are sections within a greater continent called america in in american circles there's two continents and their continent is the english-speaking one and the other one is something else. And, and to me, it's like, that's very convenient that even though the two, the, the land is all connected, you're gonna divide it just because it, it works with your narrative. Uh, and then the Europeans, even before Darwin, they were obsessed with categorizing people. So this whole idea of the caste system and dividing the land and stuff like that, it's all about being able to control the different groups. So if you're able to, to differentiate them, then you can divide and conquer, and you can also um, use them, pin them against each other. So even in today's politics, we see how they pin 
poor whites against African Americans, and then they pin everybody. So I also want us to, uh, when when I hear the white people and the black people and the Mexicans, whatever, to me it sounds like we're falling into those traps where suddenly people are are stuck in little boxes, and and they're either demonized or they're made heroes, and there's no nuances that there's good and bad people in every different type of culture as well as ethnic makeup and uh you know color of their skin and stuff like that so uh and the spaniards are not as white as they claim because they were conquered by the romans and the moors so there's this assumption that oh you must be a spaniard because of your light skin but there was uh darker spaniards and there was darker british people and stuff like that so i want to dispel some of those myths so uh where would you guys like to start? I know we already talked about Texas history. We talked about uh, the way that history is disseminated to students, the way we can make a difference in the way we share our history with others. But the one thing that Luisamo kept on saying is that we were erased from history in a sense, that when you come to America, uh, Latinos are, are not part of the history or part of uh, any contributions. So then you feel like out of place. You feel like you have you don't have a place in this world, and you know there's been this whole thing about um, different groups being um, accepted or being more out in the forefront, and you know people can say, oh, that's part of the PC culture or multiculturalism or whatever. But do you guys feel that there are strides that are being made in a positive direction, or is it all negative and destructive, and and they're never going to give us a chance to be part of 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 the history uh, books and and what our, our children are being taught. All yours, Figueroa. Any thoughts? Figueroa? Oh, it's my turn? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'm sorry, the, the question is how, how, do we, how do we share this with others? Or, uh, or how do we is present it, ourselves? Is it is it getting better or is it just this, you know, we're being bullied to death and, and it's not changing? Uh, the idea that Latinos have, um, they, they even exist or they, that we have a, a chance to express our experience. So I, I think, so a couple of things are happening, right? That are that kind of, uh, you know, uh, unavoidable, at least for right now. And, and the main thing that's happening is the demographic changes, you know, especially in Texas, um, but throughout the country. So you have more, his, more Hispanics, you have more um, certainly Mexican-Americans that are sort of moving up in terms of educational system and so forth. But you look at a place like California and you see how different it is from Texas in terms of the power structure, in terms of where Latinos are there versus here, right? In terms of how much... Uh, uh, influence they have, you know, in education there, certainly, and in politics. Not as much, and certainly uh, uh, more in terms of uh, business. And then you come to Texas, uh, which, you know, we much we have a, a, you know, we have good universities. We don't have enough good universities. We don't have a, uh, a, a, a good public school system. So we have a, a situation where um, one, um, young people of all, all groups are not being uh, given the uh, the 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 uh, education they need to know about their history, so they can uh, in some way um, um, you know if you don't the thing about taking that 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 college course one course kind of changed my sort of view about myself and so many things one college course you know three hour credit whatever and a big paper and I remember my professor's name and everything uh, and I can't say that about every class is that. That, that put something in my head that, 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 that I should say, it brought out something that I, I didn't realize was there, which is like, I, I, I'm, I'm not an other, right? Which was right to your point about the Hispanic culture has always been part of this. As, as long as, you know, we've had Spanish America, right? Or Spanish or the New Spain, right? And so, but that was, that was that historically after that, in Texas, for example, and so forth, it's like, we, we have that history, but all of a sudden it's taken away and it becomes kind of almost quaint, you know? So we have San Antonio and you have all these monuments and, 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 and so forth. And so they'll commemorate, you know, the, the, 
the uh, um, uh, the uh, what do they call it? The, the, the Spanish um, uh, the the, uh, the the walk there in San Antonio. The Spanish uh, what do they call them? The um, missions. Oh, okay. Spanish, Spanish mission. So they give lip service to that history, right? So we go back to that whole thing. So what uh, what uh, uh, El Misterio is that right? was saying earlier <laughs> is that um, that uh, we get these bits and pieces because we have such a poor educational system. So you know what's happening recently about how they want to do this Mexican American uh, uh, history component uh, in, in, in uh, universities how the, uh, the, uh, the uh, power structure, the Republicans power structure in Austin was fighting that and, and also the, uh, the State Board of Education and so forth. The issue is, as long as that we have we have the numbers, right? But we don't vote, okay? We have a lot of very smart people, but they're, I think a lot of them are very interested in just making money, are worried about themselves, not about educating youth, not about the big picture, maybe getting into politics and making a difference, you know? Or coming up with creative, innovative ideas, making a difference. I mean, that's part of what I'm, my plan I have in the next couple of years because this fits a lot into it. I really want to get um, expand some of these things through some educational concepts and ideas I have uh, to bring this forward. But the issue is um, we can't depend on the state of Texas, or the state, state board of education anymore. And we have outlets. We have we have we have we have uh, 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 this podcast. But we have so many apps. We have resources. And, and, and people like ourselves, people like the three of us here and the people that we know, they're like-minded people. We need to get together and we need to start putting this out there. We need to, we need to educate ourselves. We need to educate uh, people out there in a very innovative, creative way, make it fun. Because if we keep waiting to be saved by Austin or, oh, this is going <laughs> to the day that we get a governor, you know, this, you know, patron or whatever. You know, the, the white, the good white man is going to take care of us, right? So, uh, I heard this, I heard this from my students today, right? Without naming my students. So they told me today, we, my mom, my aunt, they really like George Bush because him and Reagan, uh, they made my, they let my, they made my, my family legal, okay? Or my aunt or my, my mom was legal because of Bush and Reagan, okay? Again, it's that that it's like the good white man is going to take care of us, and we're gonna and we're gonna be and we're gonna and we're and we're gonna be so uh, grateful to him that we love him. We're gonna love him forever, and we're gonna. I saw a lot of Hispanics going through. I actually went to see George Bush uh, yesterday, last night, uh, at his casket. I actually, actually see him. He's um, the casket at St. Martin's Church here in Houston, and uh, but there were a lot of Hispanics going through there. You know. I'm not saying I, I know what they're thinking, but the same thing these young people were thinking and their parents were thinking. I have friends, people my mother's age, who are like, they love Ronald Reagan because of the 1986 uh, uh, law, you know? But there's all kinds of other things that went on with that. that, that, that uh, and what has happened since then? Heck, is the educational system any better? So maybe, you know, they, at, at the time it made a lot of sense uh, for uh, for Democrats and Republicans to come together for this, but since then, you know, how has the lives of any of these people uh, uh, benefited? So anyway, this goes back to the whole thing. It it's not going to change as long as we expect somebody else to do something for us and help us to do this. We have to do it ourselves. We have to pull ourselves up. We have to. We can't. We got to stop talking about it. And we start. We start. We need to start doing something. And what we have now that we didn't have before. There's, there's a democratization to technology, you know? And I worry about, you know, uh, the Trump administration because part of that, when you hear about, um, um, you know, new web rules and whatever that, that Trump wants to do, it's really because they want corporate control of what we're doing right now. So it makes it harder for us to do this, more expensive for us to do this. Restrictions are put upon us. We can't get our message out because it goes back to controlling you know the the, uh, uh, the 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 socioeconomic caste system that we that we have a, 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 a there's still we may not call it a caste but we still have a stratification society here 
So anyway, so that, that, that that's what I, my opinion is, is we, uh, we have to stop hoping and we sh- you need to start doing. Yeah, I, I'm going to respond to, to a couple of things they said, and then we can move on to Yama culture. So you mentioned that um, there's, I didn't yeah. even know that there was issues with uh, teaching Spanish uh, culture or Hispanic history in Texas, because I was following the same thing that happened in Arizona and where they ban Latin American um, uh, classes or, or what are Mexican American studies, whatever they were called. And they banned right. the books. In Texas, right. And and then there was a group of activists that started the the Libro Traficante uh, and, and they started libraries of banned books. But the books were, some of them were fiction. Some of them were talking truthfully about how they were discriminated uh, in the 50s. Uh, my mom came to San Antonio from Monterey and they went to a restaurant and it said, uh, no black people, no dogs and no Mexicans allowed. And she was shocked because they they thought that Americans were cool. So um, so now they want to suppress that, that ever happened. And it just seems that uh, it's, it's very easy to to ignore um, people by uh, taking away the opportunity for people to be um, educated. But then there's also the radical element. They said that a lot of those books were teaching for people to rebel against this nation. And it's like, are they that insecure that just because you teach people of the atrocities or problems that have happened, that people are suddenly going to pick up arms and, and rebel? Like the whole, we all believe in democracy. We all believe in free speech. So now you're suppressing free speech because you don't want people to rebel. So it's just very ridiculous. But the other thing that you mentioned, um, I think in the end you said something about us being the ones that bring the change, but I don't know if you guys noticed when you post a video on YouTube now, unless you pay or unless uh, you're super popular, you get thrown in the bottom of the list. So now uh, it's almost like net neutrality where unless you are a big corporation like CNN and you're actually paying to broadcast your stuff, uh, independent media and independent videos are not as easily searchable. Uh, It must be because of algorithms. But I think that there is a hand behind, like in Facebook, where you get your message across. So I wish that all the Latin American nerds would come together and create their own uh, networking thing. But then we would only be preaching to the choir. So that's the other problem, that if we had our only like a Latino TV or Latino YouTube, then not, nobody else would ever learn anything. So you also have to make things interesting enough that people from other cultures want right. to check it out or entertaining enough. Uh, Go ahead, Yama. No, no, no. Uh, well, uh, just to answer to your question, uh, your question was, um, do you, do uh, do we feel like like the history here, or like we are part of what's going on here in the U.S.? And uh, I, I was thinking about what uh, Theodore was saying, and at the end he says, "Like, look at us." Okay, uh, I feel that us being in society, in this society, we are doing something, okay? We're not just being run over in that aspect, okay? Yes, sure, we, sh- we, we probably assimilated pretty well, right? I mean, I don't know, some people assimilate better than others, right? But um, we still have our, 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 our identity well established, even though, that's the thing, even though for me, uh, or I think for a lot of kids, their identity now or a lot of times comes after high school. Before high school, you know how you have that stigma of like, oh, you're not like, oh, you're not like this, right? Or you're too whatever. And so you try to over assimilate, right? And I guess the history, when you look at the history, you're looking at the history, you're saying, okay, well, I mean, I'm trying to over assimilate, right? Correct? And then after high school, or there's something that happens, like like Figueroa said, in the class, or um, or an experience, or you go to uh, visit somewhere, and you, you come back with a totally different view of like, holy crap, wait a minute, this this, this does exist. I I, I can uh, accept this part of of my being. You know what I mean? And and I feel that 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 for us. Um, 
now, like you said, with this uh, with, with technology, we can um, expand uh, our knowledge, or 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 better yet, uh, if you want to call it our culture, um, to the masses. Like you said, it's it's a little bit different with the logarithms and all that kind of stuff, but there's always word of mouth. Okay, and and the people that are interested or not interested right now, I mean, with, with this little uh, this little uh, medium, a lot of people are like, oh, you know what? He's on TV. Let's see what this person's got to say. And they're like, oh, wait a minute. That, that actually is interesting. You know, you never know whose mind you're going to open, especially if it's the young minds. Those are the ones we have to get. Uh, because the moment they see something different, or not different, but they get, like they say now, they get woke. It, it, it changes their whole uh, uh, perspective of what, what Spanish-speaking culture or Mexican culture is all about. Um, well, that, that's, that's all I wanted to say there. Okay. So uh, we'll do a show where we talk about stereotypes, and we'll do a show regarding uh, pop uh, Latino culture. But um, if we go back to the history, do you guys agree with Leguizamo that, um, you know, the, the, the Aztecs were minding their own business, they were uh, tolling the land, and they were uh, trading, and they were performing their, their rituals, and then this um, almost like an alien army came out of the blue and, and, and destroyed everything and, and took them captive and, uh, you know, violated their women and enslave their children like um it, it almost seems like it's uh um, every group has this type of very uh dramatic version of what happened and i think that now people can can read between the lines and see that things maybe are a little more complicated because even uh hearing about george bush's death um we're talking about how the propaganda machine said that the reason we went and and into Kuwait to liberate Kuwait was because there was these stories of the children being killed by the Iraqis and stuff like that. And then it turns out that that was a lie. So do you think that there's um, like a Mexican history of what happened with Spain, that it is actually not fully accurate and that it's, um, that it's kind of portraying them as victims when there was actually more stuff going on or even an American version of what happened that benefits this idea that, there is such a thing as a just war, and then maybe the Spanish were, uh, I don't know, I don't even know how you would justify going into someone's land and taking it over, but there's this idea that maybe there was something else going on, that it wasn't as simple as the good guys and the bad guys, and everybody gravitates towards a dungeon and dragons kind of thing, where everybody was bad on one side, and everybody was good on the other, but can you guys give us a nuanced version of what happened? Uh, with the Spanish and the Aztec Empire? Um, well, I mean, the, the, what I can tell you is that what I know is the Aztecs just simply, I mean, like I said, you know, you, you don't become an empire without having to uh, crack some skulls, okay? Let's be honest, okay? The Aztecs were the Aztecs because they were the Aztecs, all right? Their symbol, okay, the skull, wasn't just a, you know, they, they didn't have a Day of the Dead. Well, actually, it was a whole, there were two whole festivals, but I'm not going to go into that because that's a whole thing. But the symbol of the skull wasn't just like a pretty thing. Chipetotec wasn't just a god because, oh, look, perhaps we should have a god with no skin, right? Nutantecutli, you know, he existed for a reason, right? So, I'm not, I mean, we're not going to say that the Aztecs were the good guys. Because that's, again, going back to that, it's like, you know what, good guys, bad guys. But um, they had to do what they had to do. I mean, they, they eventually had to grow, right? Uh, we got to remember that it was a triple alliance. Um, there were three k kingdoms. But anyway, they all consider themselves uh, the Aztecs. And well, they had to do, I mean, that's, that's what societies that, that start, you know, stop being hunter gatherers and decide to to build a, a you know a stable society. Eventually, they want they're like, hey, what should we do? We should 
do a little bit more, 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 more. And, and, and I guess that's how you become, you, you start having empires. And it's like, hey, you know what? I like this, but they have that in those lands and they don't want to cooperate with us. So guess what? I'll get a Makawitl and I'll hit your ass, right? And, um, and I want it because this is what our people need. And we're going to go over there and we'll ask nicely. And if you want to trade with us, it's all cool. But if you're like, no, we don't want to, then you actually have to use force. And that's what kind of happened back in the day, right? Or how they weren't as woke in that aspect. And it's, it's the same in, in Europe. Hell, it was the same in Europe. What did the, uh, the Spaniards do before 1492? The Reconquest, right? right. They're fighting the Moors as much as possible. Just for, for what? For freaking dry, arid ass land. You know? It wasn't even the America they were fighting for. They was like, oh, we want this dry patch of, of central uh, Iberia. Okay? So it's it, like, it, like you guys said, it's like kind of a, a land grab and stuff. So guys became the, the Spaniards, they became the, 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 um, uh, what's the uh, the conquerors? They're like, hey, we can do whatever we want. Again, manifest destiny. It's like, hey, you know what? God was the one that made us. I mean, we, the Catholics, beat the the Muslims. That means that our religion had to be the powerful one. And guess what? Now we're gonna go. You know, let's let's find where else can we get one land to, you know, show our our, our religion to other people. Or better yet, shove it up there, Woo-hoo, you know. And once they got here to the Americas, they're like, "Oh, okay, these guys have what we want, which is the gold." And obviously, they have natural resources, but they're kind of—they're going to be kind of like the Moors. In fact, they're a little bit more scary than the Moors. In fact, let's say let's say that that they uh, they take out people's hearts. And they're still beating. That ought to scare the crap out of everybody back in Spain. And that's going to say, oh, you know what? Let's go get those guys. Because if those guys come over to this side, imagine what's going to happen to us. Okay? So, so I mean, if there's bad guys, no. I mean, it's just uh, like the game's called Age of Empires. And I guess, I, I, I don't want to say the, the best one won. Because both cultures had their own thing, but I mean, I I do side a little bit on the on the Aztec side just because I'm a homer. But again, if you see what the Aztecs probably did to uh, the Tlaxcalans and all the other people that were subjugated to them, okay, I mean, like I said, you can't become an empire without having to do some stuff on the side. I remember a teacher of mine when I was a kid, and he was always bragging about the Aztecs and the Mayans and how beautiful their buildings were. And then he would disparage the Native Americans of the U.S. They're like, oh, those guys were just running around with teepees and stuff like that. And it was this idea that for some reason uh, the the natives of uh, Central and South America were superior. But what you find out from history is that the reason that empires were as big, it was because they were close to the equator and that the resources were there and people came together because of the water resources and the, uh, the trees and and the food and the animals, stuff like that. So the same type of thing happened in Egypt and Rome and all the way to India and China is everybody that was close to the equator. If it's colder and there's less resources, people are, are more nomadic. Um, who the hell wants to live in the cold? Right. And, and then, yeah, and also, you know, great rivers, right? So, it, it, those kinds of, exactly, you, you, when, when uh, cultures became, uh, you know, uh, uh, or societies became more uh, uh, grounded, for lack of a better term, yeah. you know, the, 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 they grew and they grew and they had those. But yeah, on the, you know, the plains of, you know, of America, yeah, it's going to be a different culture for Native Americans. They don't, the resources are different. You're, yeah, totally. You're, you're right about that. So I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sure. Um, 
I'm trying to remember what was the original question. Oh, so what's the, what's your version, um, Jose, of what happened? Because, uh, you know, in Mexico, they tell us about Malinche, who's like the Mexican Pocahontas. Uh, I don't know how historical she is, that she betrayed the Aztecs to the Spaniards. Then you have the story of the other kingdoms that came together with the Spaniards to take over. Like Usamo goes through this thing about how uh, Moctezuma told uh, Cortes to pretend to be one of the gods to kind of make a deal. And then the deal went south when Cortes betrayed him. Um, but, you know, the the Mexican Catholics say that, that they were expecting for some Jesus-like figure to come. And when they saw Cortes, that was him and, and it all got connected. But I have, I know for a fact that there's a lot of myth, myths that are convenient for the modern Mexicans about what happened. Um, I think that Yama is very right that there was, um, you know, it was, it was a complicated uh, situation, but when it's all said and done, um, how do you avoid that? Like if it wasn't the Spaniards, it would have been someone else. And then if the Aztecs had the technology, would the Aztecs gone the other way? Would have they conquered Spain if they had more technology than the Spaniards? Go ahead. I'm sure. I, 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 I can follow up on that and what Ma said earlier, too. Um, and it's it sort of like, uh, if, you, if you don't mind me sort of uh, re-posing the question uh, that you, you, you put out there. Um, so, the, so for me, what's most important, I guess, is, and I'm sure this, in a long time, you guys are sort of thinking the same thing. Why are we talking about this? Why is history relevant? How is it relevant to our present day, right? Why are we where we are right now? Why are we even having these discussions, right? Why are we asking these questions? And, and how can we deal with today based on, so first thing that I, I think, and, and maybe I'm a little bit naive about this, is and this is why I think that that uh, we need to get on on top of things like education. Is that these questions we're asking right now? The reason we're asking these questions, and 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 you're right. There's so much more nuance. But what we have, the information, even we have, unless we spend a lot of time and we, and we get a degree in, uh, you know, uh, Mexican, you know, uh, uh, pre. Colombian culture or whatever, which it's not going to happen for me, is that we have more about this. You try to become more educated about this. We have a still very superficial view of our history. We still only know those bits and pieces, those things that have been shared with us and are out there. And everything you've said, and we've all said, so we always hit these high points. I mean, that, I mean, from, you uh, know, and, and we miss all the nuances. And but we don't, we don't even know the nuances because they're not there anymore. They, because conveniently in all these countries, you're right, in Peru, in, 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 um, in Colombia, in Mexico, in, in, in America, we, we've taken those pieces that, are, that work for us, right? We justify all these, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, like, like, like the La Virgen is compared to, you know, uh, a, uh, uh, a uh, Mayan or uh, Aztec goddess and all these kinds of things. What they were able to easily adopt her and, and bring her in. And that's one way that sort of pulled in some of the, uh, the indigenous people into Catholicism mm. because of La La Virgen and all that, right? So, all these things. So, and, and, but all these things are just convenient for, and yes, of course, if, if, the, if the Aztecs had the same technology and power and, and, and desires, they would have conquered Spain. So all these go, so what do we do today? What do we do today? One, first we educate people with more than, than what they've been educated so far. Again, we have limited information in these history books. And you know what? They're still using these history books, you know, right now in Texas history, you know? Uh, they're only mildly better than when I was a kid, okay? And that was, thir I mean, I was in seventh grade is what I mean. It was just like 35 years ago, whatever it was. Huh. So, so that is really sad. All this that we know, we know more since then. I, and, and a few years after that, I was in college and there was like a, a hundred, a thousand percent more information that had never been shared with me in seventh grade. There was not that much difference between me in seventh grade and me first year at Rice University. So that information existed when I was in seventh grade, right? 
but it wasn't given to me. It was kept out, deliberately kept out of history books. What I'm saying is we need to bring this information out. It needs to be readily available, accessible, in apps, whatever it is, popularly available for everybody. Because, yes, I'm not one of these people that blames all white people for what certain slave traders did. Okay, I don't blame every Spanish person for what the Spanish did to Mexico or, 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 or Central America or South America or the, Brazil, or the uh, Portuguese or the French. I don't blame anyone, and I don't blame any French person I meet today. I meet them one-on-one -on -one as human beings. But the thing is, we don't, speak the, we don't speak the same language. What I mean is, we don't speak the same language about history. We don't, mm. we don't have the same facts. There's a great article in the Washington Post I'll share with you guys, uh, and I haven't read the whole thing. I started reading it, and then I got But there's, a, there's a, a, it was on front page a couple of days ago. Uh, about this uh, Confederate uh, gentleman. Uh, well, he's a Confederate fan, and about him. And, and so there's, uh, the writer, the author of this piece has been demeaned with this guy for like maybe a year. Why people like him are convinced, still convinced to this day, no matter all the history that we know exists, and the facts are out there. Even if you take a university course in the middle of or Virginia or Alabama or Mississippi, they'll tell you the slavery was the reason for the Civil War. But there's still people out there, our age and older, whatever, that are convinced and want to still believe, no matter what the facts say, that, that it's, it's about everything else but, but, but slavery. But this gentleman is, it, you know, walks around with the Confederate stuff, the, the, the hat, the uniform. He walked into the African, the Museum of African American History in DC with this gentleman. And the people there who are like, you know, doing the metal detector stuff in the story, they're talking about how they're like looking at him a little bit weird because this guy's walking into, uh, you know, history of, of African Americans as sad as it is in our country, which is a history of oppression, awful, the most. <laughs> and yes, you know what? I feel as guilty as anybody else, as any other American for that, because as a country, that's a stain of our country. And, and, and what happened, it's a stain on Spain, a stain on France, a stain on Russia. We all have stains that we carry. So, so getting back to my point, we have to in some way pull back and say, okay, how do we create, because we're not being educated in the schools, okay? Our kids aren't being educated. Now we make a choice when we go to college, but we're not being educated in our schools. How do we, how do we make this information readily available, accessible, fun, and that's out there, and then so we can speak more of the same language, and, and then uh, try to change some minds so that then we can sort of meet somewhere in there. And then we move forward. We move forward because the problem is we can't move forward with this gentleman with the Confederate uh, costume that he wore into the African you know, Museum of African American History in D.C. because he's not, he's convinced he's got his own facts and he's going to walk in with his own, and his facts are wrong. His facts are so way wrong, you know? So anyway, that, uh, I'm sorry to sort of turn the question around a little bit there, uh, That's cool. David. For me, it's about what do we do now? What do we do now to move forward so 20 years from now, we're still not dealing with this, with this issue? And, and I think part of it's always been, my mother told me this, it's education, 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 okay? And I mean, we're all teachers here. So I'm, I'm speaking to the choir preaching to the choir, I should say. So, but it's true. It's, it's so true. So, uh, uh, all this misinformation out there, uh, then, then, um, then I think we can move on. So I, anyway, so that's where I'm at right now on this. I'm going to throw a, a curveball at you guys. Um, because again, nobody wants to be preached that. So if we stand up in a, in a classroom full of Latino kids, and we're like, you need to know your history. You need to, you know, stand up for who we are as a people. You need to do this, that. They're gonna say, you know, I'm too, I'm too busy playing video games or too busy, um, you know, trying to survive or whatever. So I think that uh, Lewisamo has a very powerful way to teach history, and that's with comedy, because you have to make it entertaining. You have to make, be making it uh, exciting. Uh, if you show a History Channel special on, on Latin America, it's going to put everybody to sleep. And, and then they're going to say, like, this is another thing. 
you're talking about civil war and stuff like that. I've had two guests on my show. Well, actually three. One was my friend who's a co-founder of the show. And he was, I was talking to him about the native Americans and how they were fighting to stop the pipelines. And, and that's couldn't people say, why are white people involved? Are they trying to be native Americans or are they just supporters? And he's like, I had nothing to do with what happened to the natives. And it was the same thing. It's like, it's very easy to say, well, that was, my, you know, even if it was my ancestors, I did, had nothing to do with them. So nobody can blame me for whatever's going on with the natives nowadays. So that's the first cop out. Second cop out is to say, well, I know that there's an alternate history about the civil war that talks about white slaves coming in from, from Ireland or whatever. And those are never counted for. And then the black slaves, um, you know, they were struggling, but we all struggle. We all struggle as immigrants or like Kanye West would say, that slavery is in your, in your mind. Uh, so there, there's all these ways that people justify or snake themselves through the realities of stuff. And then they say, oh, well, you're just being self-righteous. You have um, no type of guilt. And now you're trying to like be, be the hero of the, of the natives or the, or the black community or something by standing up for them. Uh, and so I want to th throw a comedian uh, thing about this whole thing. Um, lately there's been this um, uh, demonizing of immigrants. And I had a friend tell me, we're not demonizing immigrants. We're demonizing illegal immigrants. So again, like you were saying, who's the legal immigrant? Who's not depending on who's doing the laws. And according to Martin Luther King, if the laws are unjust, then you have the right to break the laws because you have a higher power, a higher morality that you stand for. So uh, uh, the the great uh, leader of our nation has been saying that uh, they're bringing diseases, including leprosy. And uh, before you came on, um, uh, Jose uh, Yama was sharing where did these diseases come from originally? I was saying that they, they came from the Spaniards because how can you say that, that possibly they're bringing uh, leprosy when leprosy hasn't been around for 100 years? And then, uh, so it's not only a conspiracy theory and almost uh, like Nazi propaganda, but then there's uh, this idea that they're bringing diseases that they never, that the original natives never had. So it's the Moctezuma's revenge in a sense where if they do have diseases, there are things that that are not native to the Americas. But go ahead and tell us, Europe. <laughs> tell us the theory of the original so-called settlers of North America. Um, and if there's a way that you can uh, make that uh, also comedic so we can get some people's attention, uh, Yama. Oh, uh, the, the first natives? I mean, the first uh, Europeans that came to the Americas? Sure. Well, I mean, just by, by history, and I think you guys agree that there's a football team called the Minnesota Vikings, okay, in Newfoundland. And that's the very first ones if you want to talk about, like, the non-Americans. There's actually, I saw a, um, a documentary where they found that the first non-Americans that landed in the Americas, and if you want to call the islands of Galapagos the Americas, were people from uh, from Oceania, okay? The um, uh, you want to call them um, the Maui of sorts, okay? Mm -hmm. But but yeah, um, the, yeah, but yeah, the the, uh, the 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 Vikings came. They were in Newfoundland. They had a um, a colony in Newfoundland for twenty years. The thing is, they didn't they didn't mix with the uh, with the natives at all. And then after 20 years, I said, dude, there's nothing here. For every reason, they didn't go, um, they didn't go south or more south. They just said, you know what, this, this is not interesting for us or whatever it was. And they, they went back to, uh, or the north or whatever you want to call it. They went back to, um, to uh, Scandinavia. I mean, those were the first yeah. Europeans. And obviously, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the, not only the, the diseases spread over uh, with the people that didn't, they didn't talk to. I mean, come on, here, I mean, it was the first biological warfare here in the Americas, right? 
and not only because of the the Europeans were just um, in the you know 1400s, the Europeans were just nasty people. I mean, you think of how they lived, the Black Plague and all that, and in the Americas, also in the in the Arab world or in the Muslim countries, their their cleanliness was like, oh my goodness, wow, they just Europeans just live in squalor. Let's be honest, they grab their pieces and they just throw it out. In 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 La Gran Tenochtitlan, they had a sewer system. And um, what you call it in the Arab world, you know, there's, there's there's reasons why in the mosques they have fountains. Every where there's a religious uh, a religious place in in uh, for um for Muslims they have fountains because for them it's very important to to clean themselves before they go and they pray uh, to Allah. It's a haram. It's a it's a sin to to pray to Allah. Um, dirty that's why you have the turkish baths that's why you have the fountains if you think about it a lot of our our, our uh, if you think back to the houses that you've gone to in uh, perhaps in mexico or in in latin america you know they have little fountains in in the in the courtyards well that's heritage of the moors being muslim having those fountains when it was time to pray oh wait a minute i'm here at the house i can't make it to the uh, to the mosque I'm gonna clean myself right here, okay? Going back to the disease and all that stuff, okay? So, Just being, so, being so, so Yamai, would you say that the baptismal font or the holy water receptacles at churches, they were a breeding ground for diseases? Um wow, that's a that's a very good question. I mean, I don't see why not. <laughs> I mean I don't see why not. I mean, just by I mean let's be honest. Um if, if you went back to the, you know, if you've been to the Renaissance Fair, right? You see all these people, like they're all clean. But the reality is, back in those times, there everything was really, 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 really nasty. You know, like I, Lord knows how people even survived. You know, I, I heard on the radio that uh, the the Renaissance is is against romanticized, like all these people in pompous and. But the reality is people, the, the, the life expectancy was, what, 30, 40 years right. old, you know? And if you mm -hmm. ate something bad that wasn't well cooked, in fact, the majority of stuff wasn't as well cooked, you would die like in three or four days if, if you got something, something bad on you. And the water there, well, I don't know. Now, the, they had more time to work on their stuff, you know what I mean? Um, they probably had more, I mean, you got to remember the priests, they also kind of brewed beer, you know, did some wine, some priests. So they had to, you know, perhaps, um, you know, boil some water for, for the whole process. Perhaps they might have used some of that for, uh, for baptisms. But, I mean, that right there, I, I'm, I'm ignorant of that. But just because of the history of it, it could have been a little bit uh, dirtier, in my opinion. Okay. We're running out of time. Uh, we'll we'll be discussing more uh, nasty uh, Europeans uh, bringing <laughs> to the Americas and the Americans being caught off guard uh, next time. And there's 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 a joke. I'm gonna end with a joke or or a, an anecdote. Is that if you tell uh, a typical American, hey, have you ever thought that the people that came over here were like the criminals and the and the underdogs and the people that everybody hated back in Europe and that's why they came so thanks again uh, we'll be uh, continuing discussion uh, as long as you guys um, want to do it well no no I was just gonna say that's what I tell the, uh, my students that um, that the, uh, the the guys that came here from, for uh, from England it was basically a suicide mission they were leaving and they were like you know like like when the uh, you know it just a sect in a suicide mission. That's all I was gonna say. All right. It wasn't pretty. That's it. it wasn't pretty. All right. Thank you so much. We'll be back next Thursday, uh, and we'll uh, we'll be airing this uh, on Wednesday next week. So I'll send you guys the link.